What's up guys? I get asked all the time how to deal with different types of algae issues. So what I really should do is start a segment on this channel called I've tried everything because almost invariably that's what the person says. I've tried everything and I still have this problem. Have you? Have you really tried everything? Usually when somebody says I've tried everything it really means I've tried very few things and I've kind of given up and that's why I'm calling you. So let's go over some weapons in our arsenal to deal with certain algae issues. The problem that we'll focus on for this video is going to be cyanobacteria in the form of red slime algae. It's not really algae, it's like I said, it's cyanobacteria. A lot of the processes that'll help deal with red slime will also help with just about any kind of algae issue as well. So let's get started. The first thing to realize when we're dealing with an algae issue is that it's primarily a nutrient import export problem. It's almost like weight loss. Actually, that's a good analogy. It's a lot of calories in versus calories out. If you have a surplus of calories coming in, you're going to have some weight gain. Similar sort of thing with, with algae control. There is this, there's this imbalance between the nutrient import and export going on. And that's why you're, you're seeing this manifestation of that in the form of either hair algae or in this case, red slime. If given the choice, I would much rather focus on the export rather than the nutrient import. I don't really like to put my reef tank on a diet, so to speak. Half the videos on this channel are about coral feeding and I like big healthy fish. So the first thing that we can always try to do is do water changes. Obviously, if you've listened to this channel much at all, I'm a big proponent of water changes and that is a great form of nutrient export. The second thing that I like to do in my systems is detritus removal. And that's more of like a direct removal of nutrient. Um, there's some debate as to whether it's a good idea to siphon substrate. I'm a big proponent of siphoning substrate. So whenever possible, when doing the water change, I like to get in there and suck out as much detritus that's built up in the substrate as possible. In line with removing that detritus is the removal of the algae itself. Now, in the case of cyanobacteria, it's not that effective. But if you're gonna be removing the water anyway, you may as well remove as much of that cyanobacteria as possible. So I just grabbed the trusty turkey baster and just started breaking it up. Or you could use like a small power head to kind of just lift it up and away from the rocks. And then from that, you can just uh, like siphon it right up. Now, what'll probably happen is it'll grow back in a couple of days if you have not taken care of the root problem, which again, is excess nutrient. Now, one thing that even sometimes I forget is that our tanks are a very dynamic system. Corals are growing, fish are growing, algae is growing, and one thing that tends to happen is that we neglect the power heads and the pumps that we have in our tanks. And eventually the growth of just random algae and whatnot on the pumps themselves dramatically decreases their flow. So what was once a very, very strong pump for a particular system gets slowly choked out over time. And so occasionally we, we let our maintenance go a little bit and we're down to probably one tenth of the original power of that pump. So I always recommend to increase flow. You don't necessarily need to even add any more pumps. You just need to clean your existing pumps and generally that does a good job. Okay. Last little bit of advice on mechanical filtration is temporarily installing a micron filter, like a 100 micron white filter like this. And essentially you can stir up your whole tank and get it nice and cloudy and this filter over the next few hours will suck up a lot of that and just take it out of the system entirely. And once you're done, you take this thing out and rinse it and bleach it, whatever you need to do. But that, that's another way to remove the very, very, very fine bits of detritus. And a few cycles of this will go a long way towards pretty much any kind of, of nutrient issue that you're dealing with. Another option is chemical filtration. So you may have heard the phrase GFO, that stands for granular ferric oxide or rust. But what this compound does is it strips out phosphate 
that a lot of different types of algae and cyano use for growth. And you kind of have to be careful with GFO. There is such a thing as overdosing on it. So if you use too much, it'll strip out other essential compounds that your corals and fish actually need. So you don't want to, to overdo it on GFO. It might even be a good idea to cut back a little bit on the recommended dosage just so you don't end up uh, stripping out too much out of the water. Also, you can just use activated carbon. There's a lot of uh, small particulates and stuff like that. That carbon is very well suited to remove. And it also gives uh, the water a really nice crystal clear polished look. And I guess I saved the best tip for last. And if you would have asked me a couple weeks ago if I would have even considered doing this, I would have probably said no, because I'm not a huge fan of miracle cures in bottles. But I did have some Chemiclean, um, and I'm not really exactly sure what the product is, because um, the, the packaging doesn't really tell you what's in it. It says what it's not. It's not uh, antibiotics, or certain types of antibiotics. It still might be another type, I'm really not sure. But uh, the idea is you're attacking cyanobacteria directly with this stuff. And generally speaking, I'm much more of a proponent of dealing with the fundamental issue, again with nutrient import-export issues. But this stuff we had around, um, I, I actually was considering using it as more of like a prophylactic dip to help corals that um, are struggling a bit with infection issues that, that tend to happen, but I decided to give it a try and I was amazed at how good it was. It was really, really impressive. So we can share kind of our results with that. It practically removed every trace of cyano in about 48 hours. So yeah, one thing that immediately happens is you get insane over skimming once this is put into the into the water. And you can even see it on these uh, on the downdraft portion of some of these drains, how they just start to foam like crazy. And over the next couple days, we start to dial up the skimmer and the protein skimmer starts to extract a lot of that red gunk that's just from probably all of the cyanodying. But like I said, in about two days, you would never know that we even had cyano in that tank. It's very, very impressive. So again, if, uh, if all of that stuff previous didn't work and you just wanted to drop the nuclear bomb, this might be something that you might consider. All right, there you guys go. Now, if all, if all of that stuff didn't work, now you've tried everything. It's a good arsenal uh, of different techniques that should help you out with any and all types of algae issues. Okay, good luck out there. Have a good one.